All right. You ready for God's Word? I get the privilege of sharing again with you from the Word of God. And I, I want to start uh, a mini series of a few messages. We'll see how we uh, run with this. But I want to talk on hearing from God. Hearing from God. Or another, another title could be the ping of the Holy Spirit. The ping. That's what I call it, of the Holy Spirit. And this one's on learning to listen. How do we hear from God? Well, let's start in the Old Testament. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 says this. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time pa times past to, to the fathers by the prophets, he now has in these last days spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the worlds and all that is therein. So we notice here in the Old Testament, God used various ways and at various times. That means it's more of a visitation, God coming uh, uh, by the prophets, by angelic visitations, uh, even by a donkey speaking to Balaam, the disobedient prophet. So God in various ways at various times intervened and spoke to Old Testament people to accomplish His will. But then He says, but in these last days, God has spoken to us by His Son. Something changed when Jesus, the living Word, entered into history and all of a sudden, everything's about to change as to how we hear from God. This is very important. And so if you come to John 16, verse 12 to 15, very interesting part of Scripture here. And it says this, Jesus talking, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear or carry them now. He says, I can't tell you everything about your life, your future, your destiny, your calling. I've invested enough and, you know, all the teachings of Jesus are our guidelines, our blueprint for new, new creation, new covenant living. But then he says, well, I, I'm going away. I'm going to heaven and uh, I want you, you can't take everything. If I downloaded everything, you wouldn't be able to handle it. And so then he says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears from me, he will speak. And he will tell you of things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that He will take of mine because everything the Father's got, the fullness of heaven has been given to Jesus on His re resurrection and ascension. And then Jesus said the Holy Spirit, He will take of mine and reveal it to you. This is incredible. Too many people want an Old Testament relationship with God. And it's very clear the Bible teaches that's not the way we live. Uh, since Jesus came, Jesus left, sent the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit came. That's the way of the future for all of those who believe. And so you cannot carry the fullness of God in this world without the Holy Spirit. Jesus has made that very clear. He'll take, the Father's given me all stuff, everything, and uh, I give it to the Holy Spirit and send it to you so that He can download into your lives all of the light, life and love of heaven in Christ. He can download it and you can carry it in your world. And that He says this, but listen, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. In other words, wait till I send the Holy Spirit. 
wait until he comes. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And from then on, you'll be able to have the fullness of heaven being downloaded into your life. So here's some things. First one is this. You need to make a friend of the Holy Spirit. Create a relationship, an intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Too many people love Jesus and all that stuff. Well, this is the Spirit of the Lord now sent for this chapter of history. And if you love Jesus, you'll love the Holy Spirit because He's the one that reveals all things to us from Jesus, from the Father. He will guide you into all revelation and truth. He will reveal what He hears from heaven. And He will tell you of things to come. That's one of the things, an unfair advantage that the Christian has in life. Listening to the Holy Spirit uh, warns you, gets you ready and prepares you for things to come that you may not and others around you may not be aware of. That's the Holy Spirit's role. And uh, ultimately, He will glorify Jesus. Let me say this. Stop waiting for an angel to sit on the end of your bed and give you some... I'm amazed how many New Testament prophets need angelic visitations to carry the message. And that's not what Jesus said. I'll send you the Holy Spirit and He will be on you, in you, around you and over you, but He'll be in you and He will download heaven and the will of the Father and the promises and commandments of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will make you aware of them. And uh, you got to get it with the program that Jesus has planned for your life. And that is for you to have an incredible relationship with the Holy Spirit so you can hear from heaven, know what the Father's will is and know what Jesus is activating on planet Earth by the Spirit of the Lord in all power and in all glory. Can you say Amen. Ha! In other words, start getting up in the morning and saying, good morning, Holy Spirit. Do you hear me? Good morning, Holy Spirit. What's the download for today? What are the standing orders? I commit myself to you today. Lead me, guide me and uh, uh, give me that ping of heaven so that I know when you want me to act in special ways. The other thing is in hearing from heaven, uh, we've got to stop wanting Old Testament manifestations and get into the fullness of the Holy Spirit living within you, dwelling within you. But that the second thing about hearing from heaven is the Holy Spirit will help you to recognize special God seasons. God has seasons when He moves in a different way and wants His people to be with Him. And in every God season, God releases a prophetic anointing, a sharp edge of the Holy Spirit's promptings upon the church and upon the leadership. Those that are listening, He releases this prophetic edge of the anointing. And uh, here's, here's when this happens, before a new season. God does nothing except He tells the prophets and prophetic people first. That's why when I prophesy about God's plan, people, you know, send emails and whatever the other stuff is. And they say, I've had that in my spirit. Well, that's the Holy Spirit telling you there's a shift, there's a change, there's a God season on the planet. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And it's the sharp edge of the prophetic speaking into the future. The second thing, that God does is uh, by this anointing, it happens and comes before a new God season. Secondly, it always happens clearer in times of shaking and crisis. If you follow any of the preachers around the world, many of them with a prophetic teaching gift or a prophetic edge or, you know, uh, they're all saying the same thing. We're in a season of shaking and crisis and the world's in turmoil and there's wave after wave of, of just wickedness and darkness and stuff going wrong. 
but there's the righteous that are standing in such a season because God is speaking prophetically in an incredible way. And then the third, there's many of these we could talk on this all day of how the Spirit of God anoints us. But one of the things that I love about the Holy Spirit, as you learn to partner with the Holy Spirit, He's in you, uh, is that He'll lead you into divine appointments. I love this. I'll talk more of this in this series where the Holy Spirit just leads you to people. Or if you're in a company or out doing something in life and you just meet someone or talk to them and you may have talked to them before, but the ping goes off. Ping. Ah, you want me to wait a little longer here. Something's going to eventuate. And God leads you into divine appointments where you sow the seeds of heaven into another life that the Holy Spirit then waters. And we're in one of these special God seasons right now. Stuff is crazy, but God is in control. The world is wicked, but the Lord is righteous. Darkness seems to prevail, but the light shines and dispels darkness. We're in one of these seasons and it demands of you and I that we learn how to hear from heaven and partner with the Holy Spirit and know the ping, the prompting of the Spirit in your life. So next point, don't ignore the promptings. As I said, I call the prompting of the Holy Spirit the ping of the Holy Spirit. It's like on your mobile phone and somebody sends you a message, ping, it goes off or whatever. That's not the sound. But, uh, or someone rings you and there's a ringtone and you know who it is. And uh, you realize that someone wants to communicate with you. And so you've got to develop that ability to hear the ping and know who it's from. So here's my question, are you too busy to listen? We can get this right and have a people that listen to the Holy Spirit. We can change our cities and not just fill our churches. Are you too busy to listen and develop an an ear to hear what the Spirit would say to the churches? Is there a cacophony of sounds in your life? You got the, you know, the TV or the radio up full blast. You got everything else happening. And there's every noise on the planet in your world. You couldn't hear the Holy Spirit if you you wanted to. You got to learn to be still and know that I am God. And as you do that, uh, you'll find that His voice becomes clearer and clearer. And uh, you begin to understand the ping And so you've got to develop this intimacy with the Holy Spirit. He's your best friend. He's your comforter. He's your guide. He's your empowering one. He's the spirit of life in Christ. He's everything you need to live a God life that overcomes in this world. Develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Another point, learn to know the sound of your ping. A lot of husbands tell me, yeah, I've got a special ringtone on my phone for my wife. uh, So I know not to answer it. I think that's not quite true. But uh, shivers at times. But this, this ringtone, this ping of the Holy Spirit is very important to you. It can save you from danger. It can lead you through a door that you hadn't even considered. It can join you to people that will be a part of your your journey forward that you weren't even in your world. But ping, ping. I try and live like this. I talk to everybody, but I'm listening for the ping. And sometimes the ping happens the first time I meet someone. And I say, God, I don't know what you're going to do and What you're trying to tell me, I will just cultivate relationship with this person until it unfolds what the ping was meant to be for. And so here's the deal about this. Your God sound, your ping is unique to you. Don't listen all the time to somebody else's God word. 
Well, I've had a God ping about this. Don't take that on and say, well, I believe that too. No, no, you get a God ping in your spirit. Listen to a whole lot of preachers from every zone of the world if you want to. But listen, pursue those that you have a God ping about. That the Holy Spirit says, this is the way, walk in this. Know that your sound is unique. It can only be known through intimacy. You can't go past the illustration and example of marriage. The more intimate you become with your wife that God's given you, your husband, the more you keep open connection of intimacy together and affection and sharing, the more you will trust each other's voice. It'll become to you a voice of hope and blessing. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants. He wants to speak to you in such a way that you recognize His sound, know it's God, and then you're able to invest in it. It's known through intimacy. You got to learn to trust your ping. 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 So many people say, I I thought God spoke to me, but I wasn't sure. That's because you don't trust the voice, trust the ping, the prompting. And you've got to learn to trust it, obey it, act on it. And when you do and God does something, your strength and confidence gets greater. You go forward in the things of the Spirit of God. Now, when it comes to ping messages, one of the things I've learned in moving in the Spirit, trying to live a daily walk of being open to the ping and the promptings of the Holy Spirit is simply this, that ping messages are very short. They're usually just an alert. And uh, from that point, you need to realise you've got to step out in faith on the little God gives you. It says of Abraham, he went out not knowing the big picture. He just knew he had to take a step. And every step he followed God. And that's how it is with the Holy Spirit. Too many people would never dare to have a go and be a blessing in your world because you're not sure what will come after the first step. That's all you need to do is step and trust that little piece. You've got to, so a ping of God or a, a message can be just a picture or an impression or a few words. And it's just a small part of the eternal plan picture of what God wants to do. And you don't need to know all of that. You just need to have that ping, that little word that you can share and speak into someone's world or into your life. And it will unlock doors that take you further and further. So you got to step out on what you know. Man, I, I, this, it takes years to simply say, God, I'm going to trust you. Holy Spirit, I want to I want to partner with you. I don't know how many times I've uh, I've had to learn just trust the word. I ask the Holy Spirit all the time before church, show me people in the church. Sometimes he shows me quite a few. Just not clear, but I know it's that person. Uh, just a few weeks ago in our on-site service. That morning as I'm praying, waiting on God, God shows me the picture of a dark-haired woman. That's all I got. And so at the end of the service, ah, God, the ping happens right there. And I see this woman, dark hair, straight hair, a young woman, husband next to her. And uh, I said, "Uh, I just need to speak to you. And God then said, uh, pray blessing and children into their family. And uh, as I did, uh, it just touched her heart in a tremendous way uh, because they had been believing God for children, hadn't happened. And this was a promise from God. And just on a ping, the first one was, look for a woman with dark hair. And uh, then as I did, one step, I think, I need to speak into your life and pray for you. And uh, God, what are you saying? And then uh, blessing and fruitfulness, children. And that's all I got. That's not a whole picture. 
of the whatever. It's just you take one step at a time and the Holy Spirit, listen, church, listen. God wants to use you and I to carry the blessing, the Spirit and the life of Jesus to everyone in our world. And He sent us the Holy Spirit to be partner in doing that. If we'll let Him flow and we'll listen to His promptings, man, we can touch a city in Jesus' Name. And the biggest thing about all this is we learn by practice. In my prophetic schools that I've done over many, many years, we have acti activation sessions and uh, where each one has to get someone else in the group and we practice hearing from God about that person. And uh, I, I tell them, hey, listen, we're practicing. We may not get it right and perfect, but we're having a go. We release each other to have a go. And I tell them about not trying to say, get all huff and puff and thus saith the Lord. No, no, just I believe the Holy Spirit saying this. I want to share it with you and then leave it. And so if, man, if the church would step up to hear the Holy Spirit, the promptings, the ping in your daily life, ping, you would be amazed at the people God would lead you to. You say, well, I don't, I don't really know how to hear from God. Well, that's a, a confession of unbelief because God's speaking to all of us all the time. And it's simply a matter of by faith. Listen, if you can't get, get on top of this, just take, every, take in the morning, go to the Word and find a promise from God. And get that promise and then say, Holy Spirit, lead me to somebody today and I'll share this promise with them. You're prepared for the ping when He says, this is the person. Share with them. There's more than one way. All believers receive pings. I try every day. I fail many days. Well, I don't fail. I just don't. I'm not aware of it. And maybe God doesn't do it every day. But every morning of my life, I say, Holy Spirit, I want to hear the ping today, whether it's about my family, my finance, the ministry, the church, the buildings, our house, whatever. I just want to hear your ping as I walk my daily walk in my business, in what I do. Lord, I'm listening and all the other stuff, I'm listening for the ping. And when I hear it, I'll take a step, not knowing, but believing that you will, you will make your way evident in my life. I, I want to challenge every one of you today. i got a couple more weeks on this, learning to listen to the ping of the Holy Spirit. And I'm challenging you. Why don't you from today, from hearing this message, why don't you come to God and say, God, I, I just surrender again. I'm so busy doing and being and all that stuff and I, I just haven't heard the ping. And now I realize it's for me to be a blessing in my world. And many of the interventions and intersections of life, you're there giving a ping. Hey, this guy's in, come into your world right now. Just take a moment longer and listen to what I want you to say. And I, I believe you'll be amazed at the transformation in your life, in your world, because you became a partner. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Fill me and flow through me. And I'm listening for your ping, your prompting in my life that I might be a blessing in Jesus' Name. Father, today over each one, let your Holy Spirit, Jesus, anoint and appoint people May it be a new season for all of us in these troubled days that we will come as carriers of the anointing, bringing the word of grace and hope and faith into a broken world and seeing many redeemed and repaired by the Spirit of the living God. I bless each one today in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Now listen. 
Just before we close, I love doing this, giving people the opportunity of saying yes to Jesus. I know that when I preach and when we worship, do church in any for, form or forum, the Holy Spirit's there speaking to people about your life. You may not even have said yes to Jesus. And today's the first time Spirit of God saying, come on, say yes to Jesus, get saved, born again, and become a child of God. Maybe for the first time you're hearing the Word of the Lord, or maybe God's bringing you back to Himself. You've been slack, you've messed around, you haven't been in tune with the Holy Spirit. It's been all your way. God say, no, come on, I want to redirect your path. I want you to start to be a Spirit-led believer and I'll lead you into blessing and fruitfulness like you've never known before. If that's you and the Holy Spirit speaking to you, I want you to just before God lift your hand and say, yes, Lord Jesus, I want to surrender my life to you afresh. I want to live for you, but I don't want to live religious. I want to live spirit-led, spirit-filled, spirit-anointed. I want to be one of those that carries the good news of the gospel to other people. And I'm just saying, yes, Lord, I want to be used of you in a greater measure than ever before. I surrender to you. Wash me clean with all sin and all the stuff that's not pleasing to you. Cleanse me. Wash me with your blood. Break the power of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Hey, I love this series. I love this first session. Hey, God bless you. See you next week for se session number two on hearing from God. Amen.